Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar El Erwadi, and uh, I will be speaking on the behalf of Dr. Zorwizi Abu Samah. And the topic today is about towards bulk nano bubble generator, uh, development of a bulk nano bubble generator based on hydrodynamic cavitation. But before, I would like to introduce to you a brief summary of where I come from and the university that we work this project on. It is Al-Faisal University and it's uh, found in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the land of the late uh, King Faisal uh, house and it has uh, 3000 students and from over 40 countries. We have five colleges, business, engineering, medicine, science and pharmacy. Now the outline of the presentation will be about uh, introduction to nano bubble size and form imaging and analytical techniques, application of nano bubbles and hydrodynamic cavitation. Also, we'll talk about the prototype development, design, mechanism, fabrication process, and testing. So, but before I go into what is a nano bubble and stuff, I would like to show you the difference between a normal bubble and nano bubble. On the left of the screen, we have a normal bubble and we have the dirt in brown. Now, a normal bubble will go above the dirt, but a nano bubble will go below the dirt. And this is one of the applications of nano bubble. It's removing the dirt on surfaces and waste management. Now, introduction to uh, the size of nano bubbles. Uh, they can range from 10 nanometers to one micrometer. Also, uh, they are sometimes called uh, ultra fine bubbles based on ISO 2481 and in 2017. Theoretically, they range from a millisecond to microsecond and uh, they can stay in uh, liquid suspended in liquid for over a year, actually, one of the studies. And uh, of, of course, the stability of the nanobubble in liquid is uh, attributed to uh, electrostatic uh, repulsion, dynamic equilibrium, and contact line pinning. Now, uh, an ultra-fine bubble ranges from 0 0.01 to 1 uh, micrometer, which is an, also a nanobubble based on the ISO. And the uh, microbubble is larger. It's from one micrometer to 100 micrometer. And the normal bubble is between 100 micrometer to one millimeter. Now the nanobubble can be stable for days in water and the cavities will uh, shrink and disappear, which is between one nanometer and 10, milli uh, 10 nanometers. Of course, the normal bubble, you can see it uh, by the eye, it's uh, macro. Now, going to the size effect properties of uh, nanobubbles, uh, as you can see on the right of the diagram, uh, sorry, on the left of the diagram, you have a normal bubble. It will uh, rise fast and it has poor mass transfer and it will burst at the surface. Now, the micro bubble is smaller. It will burst in the liquid, not on in the surface. It will rise slowly and uh, it has better mass transfer than the normal macro bubble. Now the nano ultra or ultra fine bubble, it will swell and burst in the liquid. It will also move in a Brownian motion. It will stay up to hours and months in the liquid moving in Brownian motion. And it has higher mass transfer. Now uh, we have uh, three main types of nanobubbles. We have the macro pancakes and the surface nanobubbles. These are found at the solid liquid interface. And uh, the macro pancake, they have width of uh, about few hundred nanometers to micrometers, and they have uh, a height of uh, one to two nanometers. Now the surface nanobubble uh, is actually a radial curvature of 100 to 1000 nanometers, and the height is between 520 and 1500. Now the bulk nanobubble, which we are interested in, uh, is having a radii of curvature of 50 to 100 nanometer. So these were the three main types of nanoscopic gaseous uh, bubbles. Now uh, we have the AT, uh, AFM images. Uh, this is atomic force microscopy a technique which is being used to image the nanobubble on the surface. And uh, 
as you can see here in this experiment, we have uh, the liquid and an air. You can see that in the air, the AFM, uh, you can see the remains of the nanobubble in black. And in the liquid, you can see them. This is at the surface of uh, sodium carbonate solution. Now, uh, we have another technique, which is called nanoparticle tracking analysis. Now, this technique is used to measure the diameter of bulk nanobubbles and the properties particle by particle in the, uh, in the, uh, in the liquid. Now, uh, you, can, uh, you have a laser, and then you have a metallized surface, and above it is the liquid that you want to stand below. What is glass, and you have a laser beam and a camera. Uh, the camera will capture the video uh, of the of the particles, uh, nanobubble particles, moving. Now you can also calculate uh, the hydrodynamic diameter of the bubble using the Stoke-Einstein equation. You and in this uh, NTA software, now uh, the Stokes-Einstein equation is. Uh, Boltzmann constant times temperature in Kelvin divided by 6 pi solvent viscosity times uh, solute radius. Now, uh, going to the motivation of this project. Uh, actually, in this project, uh, we will uh, like to uh, tell you that this is not a new uh, project or invention we did. It's actually innovated by a Japanese company and has been tested and used. Now, uh, it's been used in many industries, including environment, food, medical, marine industries, and more. Now, by 2030, in uh, reported by Kyushu Bureau of Economy, Trade, and Industry, they said that this marketplace will grow $130 billion. Also, they have many applications ranging from wastewater treatment to drug delivery, uh, to uh, fish farming and agriculture. Now here we have uh, two studies. One study which is uh, made in uh, Indonesia and uh, the other one, uh, they are talking about the effect of uh, different types of uh, water and using nanobubble generator and how it will affect the growth of the uh, shrimp, uh, white leg shrimp, uh, on the right, this was done in Indonesia, and on the tomato plant. Now, in the tomato plant growth, uh, we have uh, irrigation with original water, which is in blue, and we have the uh, irrigation with pump aerated water, which is in red, and we have the nanobubble aerated water using nanobubble generator, which is in green. Now, you can see the stem diameter in 45 days is a bit slightly uh, larger than the other two. Also in the height, the plant height, uh, the 45 days is taller than the uh, previous two. Also the tomato yield, the gram per plant, you will have in the 70 days about 560 uh, grams per plant, while in the normal water that you irrigate the plant, you get about 450. Now, going to the other right of the screen, we have uh, this uh, uh, study done in Indonesia. And uh, in this Indonesia shrimp study, using the nanobubble generator, uh, they used in the pond, the production of the white leg shrimp uh, growth resulted in high survival and growth rate. Uh, this resulted in uh, uh, that the nanobubble managed uh, to keep, to maintain the DO result oxygen at optimal range uh, in the shrimp growth. It was an 81 days study, and uh, it had about 34,000 juvenile uh, uh, shrimps. You can see that uh, using a diffuser aerator, uh, the normal filter they put for the uh, uh, fish um, the survival rate was 78%, but while, while using the 90, the nano bubble, it was about 95%, which uh, affected uh, the farming uh, for this uh, pond. Now, uh, why this happened? Of course, because you are keeping the, the uh, dissolved oxygen and water and more time, like we uh, said previously, the bubble is smaller and it will not rise to the surface and burst, but it will stay in the water and it may burst in the liquid. Now we have the feed conversion in uh, the diffuser, it was 1.5, well in the nanobubble, which is 1.1, and the total harvest per kilogram 
and the nanobubble we had 436 kilogram which which shows that the shrimp the 34,000 uh, juvenile shrimps grew faster and larger and the productivity was 8.7 kilogram per meter cubed now, introduction to hydrodynamic cavitation. Before we speak about the um, the device that we made, now the hydrodynamic cavitation is just a process in which you have high energy and you are releasing it in a liquid uh, upon bubble implosion, and this, due to decrease and increase in local pressure. Uh, will have the first uh, the, the bubble to form, then it will expand and then it will uh, collapse and implode. Now, hydrodynamic cavitation uh, can be bad in pipes, but it has many advantages in uh, different applications. Now, it can be, it can offer uh, energy efficient way of generating cavitation, which will be used to generate the nanobubble. Now going to the prototype development. Now on the uh, right, you have a diagram. This is a gas liquid mixed fluid hydrodynamic cavitation. You have four regions. Uh, you have the high pressure gas liquid mixed and the negative region and the micro nano bubble forming and then the exit. Now the device works by hydrodynamic cavitation in which you are forming uh, macro bubbles and then imploding into the bulk nano bubble by local by change in local pressure. Now as the water circulate in the device, the local pressure will drop before uh, below the saturated vapor pressure and uh, this will cause cavitation. Now going to the design function of the prototype and I have here a 3D printed uh, version of it. For uh, some application, we are using an ozone generators. Now, uh, the bulk nano bubble generator is uh, having it three parts. You have the top lid, the core, and then the casing. Now, as you can see here, this prototype will go in a case, and you have the inlet, and you have the outlet coming out, and you have uh, water inlet, for example, or ozone water, and then the outlet will go to your pond or to your application. Now. Uh, uh, it will flow through a nozzle and you have uh, channels inside uh, the top part, uh, columns, which uh, will increase uh, the velocity of the water and then the water will uh, flow uh, in these, uh, you can call coils if you want, and uh, it will change, you will have about uh, a pressure of 2.3 kilopascals and uh, temperature of 293 Kelvin. Now the cavitation will exit uh, the inlet uh, with holes of 1.57 millimeters. Now the fabrication process of our prototype was done by Formlab or 2-3D printer. Now, of course, you have many techniques to make this prototype, but we used uh, this printer because it's very uh, efficient and it will give you a high quality product that we can test later on. Now, uh, the, the material was resin, stereolithography, SLA technology. And uh, we had about a layer thickness of 100 micrometers and the laser of the printer was 140 micrometers. Now, of course, you can uh, change the dimension of this uh, uh, device and scale it to whatever application you have. We actually have a prototype this big for wastewater management. And of course, uh, it had diameter of uh, nine centimeter, not this one, the larger one. Uh, this one is about uh, five centimeters to four. And we it took about uh, 20 hours to build. Now, uh, of course, we use the hydrophobic uh, resin that hates water. And uh, yep. Now going to the testing of the prototype. Of course, uh, it was tested in the lab, but we did not have the equipment to test uh, the nano bubbles, but we tested the macro bubbles. And we can see here a photo of uh, four uh, different time intervals at zero seconds, where we have the water inlet at uh, two seconds, uh, water inlet, of course, of laminar flow, and at four seconds, where you can see the form of uh, bubbles and then uh, collapsing.
Now, uh, you'll have the large bubble after police. Of course, this should be encasing. It will be more efficient, but this is just to show the formation of the bubbles. Now, uh, the micro, now, of course, the micro scale bubbles will form larger macro scale bubbles, as you can see here. And at eight seconds, we had the newer and smaller bubbles being generated. But uh, we did not have uh, the two technologies, uh, devices that I talked to you before, the AFM and the NTF, to measure the nanobubble. But we assume that uh, it is a successful experiment. Now, of course, we did it in, uh, like I said, in a lab. Uh, to form uh, the bubbles and the uh, seat, and uh, it was immersed uh, water and liquid after uh, we put it in the casing, and uh, we expect to be uh, to have bubbles smaller than the liquid that it is immersed in. Uh, and this is of course due to smaller uh, pressure. Also, uh, of course, the device uh, it was shown that it it's continuously generating micro bubbles uh, that you can see by. Now, uh, in the future work, we are focusing to combine a nano bubble generator uh, with an instrument that can detect the nano bubble. And uh, here we have a, ver a second version of the uh, nano bubble generator. Uh, of course, in the previous uh, version, uh, we had more material inside, which was uh, costly when we used to 3D print it. And now we took uh, some material outside. We did some improvements uh, regarding the velocity, the channels. Uh, we did the C-shaped channel. And uh, we did uh, an empty hole to empty the resin when we print it. And then we fill it by silicone. And uh, yes, we want to increase its efficiency in the future and make it flexible to be easily deployed in any uh, application uh, you'd like to use it on, especially it can be used in fish tanks uh, to keep the dissolved oxygen and water for fish and agriculture. And it's also being used in uh, dialysis machines to remove the calcium from the tubes. Now, in conclusion, uh, I have uh, talked about developing a nano bulk uh, bubble generator, and I have talked about the three different types of uh, uh, nano bubbles and uh, the difference between a macro and nano bubble. And uh, like I said, that we successfully generated the micro scale bubbles using the hydrodynamic cavitation, and we formed the bulk nano bubble while it it, you could not see it, uh, but we saw the micro uh, scale bubbles. Uh, of course, uh, the nano bubble, you cannot see it by the eye. You need the two techniques that we talked to before, or you can measure the DO before and after in the nano bubble on time intervals using a DO meter. Now, um, uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me or uh, Dr. Zuruzi on the